Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. May God bless the reading of the Gospel. Fire, wind, confusion, all sorts of things happening that no one could understand. People preaching a sermon, and magically, everyone listening heard those words in their own native language. This was not the UN. They did not have little earphone monitors with their picked translator translating for them. What they had was the Spirit of God working through Peter and working through the apostles and bringing down that amazing energy of God. completely beyond anything that makes any sense whatsoever. How many here have heard of an author named Anne McCaffrey? Anne McCaffrey writes science fiction fantasy type novels. And she wrote a particular series called The Dragons of Pern. And Pern was a planet that um, had a big problem called Thread. It was something that came down from above and fell on the land and destroyed things. That's the concise version. And there were also dragons living on Pern, and there grew up an entire culture, which I love her. She creates this whole, you know, universe and world and all of this stuff to look at. It. But there were dragon writers. <coughs> you know the success lately of the How to Train Your Dragon uh, films. You know, the, these were a little more serious than those. But um, in this, people are <coughs> selected. They're chosen and they meet their dragon, and they imprint upon them when, they, when, they're, when the dragon is hatched. And they grow up with them, and they learn to ride them and guide them, and they become completely bonded, completely together with this dragon, who of course breathes fire. Now, Anne McCaffrey wasn't trying to write some sort of allegory about the Holy Spirit, but as I was deciding whether or not to go to sleep last night, somehow the dragons of Pern popped into my head, and I thought, that's just fabulous, because the breath of the dragons <coughs> was fire and energy, and the dragon riders would ascend into the sky and guide the dragons and use that fire and that energy from the dragons to destroy the thread that was falling from the sky that was going to destroy them. So they would use this power, this fire, this strength and amazing energy. And of course, when the dragons flew with their humongous wings, they stirred up the wind as well. So we have Wind and Fire, one of my favorite bands, but no, wait, okay. <laughs> but, but um, no, that's Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, they used this gift, 
this, this, this gift that was just present in their universe. And they were each selected to do this, the, the dragon riders of Pearl, Pern. They were selected, they were gifted, and they were charged with using that power and that gift to take care of their world, to take care of their people. It wasn't a gift that they were allowed to just go around and have the dragon burn down people or anything. This was a gift that was good. This was a gift that they were charged with this responsibility of using it and sharing it, defending their world, and making sure that people were taken care of. So I thought, well, I don't know how many of my Bethel people are familiar with Anne McCaffrey and the Dragons of Pern, but you've probably all heard stories about fire-breathing dragons. So, yeah, we'll go there. This particular reading in Acts, where we have tongues of fire and wind, and we have the Spirit working through Peter and the Apostles, is so powerful for us. We have this saying that God is still speaking. God is still speaking through us and to us and for us and around us. We had a wonderful conversation last night with a young woman who came by the, the Bethel booth and wanted to know what was the comma and the God is still speaking and the rainbow about and all of that. We had a really great conversation talking about how God is still working in us and through us and how amazingly God works right here in, in Bethel with our people. We talked about answered prayer. We talked about the power and the energy of God. And we talked about the extravagant welcome and the diversity within our community. And um, I, I hope to see your visit someday. We had a, we had a great conversation. Um, so what do we do now to make use of this? How can we harness that dragon, that fire, that gift from heaven that is flames and energy? We can't just sit here and expect it to just zap us like lightning or something coming down upon us. It takes some faith. It takes an active decision to accept that spirit, to breathe it in and to breathe it out, to use it and to listen to it. When we have our Bible studies, we sometimes have people say, well, how, how do we know? I'm not going to say, well, you just know. You know, sometimes you do, but that's, that's not it. We study the Word of God. We read it. We learn from it. And yes, the Spirit of God, I firmly believe, is directing our conscience. If it isn't our entire conscience, it's directing our conscience so that we know that we probably really shouldn't go up and yell at that person and insult them, even if we're angry. You know, we know that. But we also know that we should work with them lovingly if there's a problem and try to work it out between us in a way that uses the Spirit of God and the love of Christ to deal with it. It's not easy to do, but that's, but that's what we're called to do. How do we do it? All I can do is give you some examples I once had a professor, and in the class I was studying, it was a, a choral conducting class. And we were trying to figure out, as students in the class, how do we get our singers to sing with more energy and more positive 
And this professor had us do an exercise, a physical exercise ourselves. And the exercise was to smile. Even if we weren't happy, smile. Doesn't matter whether you feel like smiling, smile. And then sing a simple little song, row, row, row your boat, or happy birthday, or something that no one has to think about while smiling. So we all went, row, 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 your boat, you know. And, and then he had us like walk around, drum up a little bit of physical energy, smiling, you know, move your arms a little bit, you know. The whole point was to get the energy flowing, and believe it or not, within a few moments, everybody sounded happier, had more energy in their singing, more energy in their life. And what did we have to do? We had to step out on faith and follow directions. Okay, so then we say, well, but faith is a real problem for me. I don't get it. How can I believe that something's going to work? Or how can I believe in something that I can't hold in my hand? I can believe in this light because I can touch the switch and turn it on and see my notes that I'm completely departed from. Um, but I can see that and feel it and touch it, and it's a tangible thing. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. Faith means we say, okay, I'm going to take it on faith, it's going to work out. But we have to really do that. So how do we get that faith? Anybody have a thought? Non-hypothetical. <laughs> we get it from the Holy Spirit. And what's the mechanism? Prayer. Prayer. Sure you <laughs> it is a promise of God that if we ask for faith or ask for God to increase our faith, God will increase our faith. Of course, it's a catch-22. Why? you got to believe that God will increase your faith if you ask Him in order to even give the gumption to ask Him. So let's have a practice. We're going to have a practice session right now. You're going to repeat after me. Okay? Creator God. Creator God. Help my faith. Help my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. That I can believe and accept your Holy Spirit. That I can believe and accept your Holy Spirit. To work through me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, believe it or not, I guarantee you, your faith is going to be increased then, right now. Because you stepped out and you said that, even if you were just following. It really does work. Now, let's see if I can get back to where I was going. Oh, the language thing. What an amazing accomplishment that without the UN Board of Translators, all of these Jews from all of these different countries were able to understand what Peter was saying. Now, I want to kind of call on that occasionally in our neighborhood because I know that we have a lot of people that live around us and near us that are Spanish speaking. And I don't speak Spanish very well. I'm working on it, working on it, but I don't speak it very well. But, you know, I'd like to go, okay, let's just do the Pentecost thing and have everybody understand it. I know that what people can understand is a positive energy and a welcome and a prayer they can understand a rhythm and a singing with us. I'm not sure that someone who speaks only Spanish today would understand every word I'm saying today. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But that is the power 
of God. I heard a recording this morning of a little bit of this story of Acts, like eight, eight or ten verses, just the capsule version being spoken in five or six languages at once. It was like in English and Tagalog and Spanish and French and something else, I don't remember what. And it was all at the same time. And it was just this amazing noise, this glorious noise. And yet, listening through it, you could glean the understanding and the energy. And every once in a while, I pick out a word I recognize, I could hear the bit of the English one, you know, for that. And I thought that was amazing. It was a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. It was a demonstration of God's power in that time that these people all understood each other. We can understand each other, even if we can't speak each other's verbal languages. We can understand each other. And that's something for us to work on to build our faith and our Holy Spirit power <clears throat> with that. Today, with that blessing of the Holy Spirit, we call it the church's birthday. Now that seems a little bit weird because they've already been meeting for a bit after Easter. So the reason we call it the, spirit, the, the church's birthday, let's think about it, there's a reason. What would have happened if the apostles went out to speak to all of these people and to start baptizing them and to start sharing the gospel with them and they had had no spirit they hadn't taken in that breath they had had no power no fancy universal translator what would have happened would we even be here Probably not. That's why it's the birthday of the church. It's because with the blessing of that power and with that event where they started spreading the gospel in public as a whole without fear, the church became a real thing that spread like wildfire. We can do that too. We have to remember that little prayer that we said and believe on it and act on it. Now, speaking of prayers, there's an activity that we're going to do during our prayers, but I want to tell you about it now so that you can get it ready. So let me show you. If you didn't get one of these little squares of paper, hold up your hand and maybe we can get some to you. Did everybody get one of these? Okay, so we need one for Carol. Willie, can you? Okay, Donna's getting it, all right. Anybody else? You, you guys get them, right? Okay. Sandy didn't get one either, so we're going to need two. Or you can go get one. And I think Carol. I'm going to give you this one for right now. So on those little slips of paper, um, just give it a little thought, and I put this out a little bit on Facebook uh, in case I could get people started in their thought process. We want to have you write down a prayer, and I've called it Pentecost prayer. It could just be a hope. It could be one word, it could be a sentence. What we're looking for here or what I'm looking for, you can do something different if you want, is a prayer for our, our community, for Bethel, for what we do in our community, 
or even just for you individually, if there's something that you need that spirit and that energy in your life, something that you want to see happen as a result of us breathing that spirit in, breathing that spirit out, and having that kind of energy in our community. That's what that's for. It could be something like, I want a really wonderful vacation Bible school to happen. It could be physical healing for everybody at Bethel. It could be more people in the pews. It could be courage to spread the word for all of us. Anything. It could be somehow getting our lights fixed. Finding the time and the, and the right equipment and the right people to do it. So we can brighten those up. They can be brighter. We figured that out. You just got to figure out how to get to them to do it. I don't, anything. But whatever is close to your heart or important to you when it comes to your spiritual life, your family, your community, Bethel, anything, write it down on this. Then we have some balloons. And during our prayer time, we're going to blow up balloons. Now, if you're one of those people that has trouble blowing up balloons, you are hereby authorized to ask somebody near you that's doing it well to blow up your balloon. Okay. <laughs> and we'll talk more about it when we get to that. After we've blown up our balloons and written our prayers, and you see they have this little thread on them so that you can tie them to the balloon. And you know when you blow up a balloon, you have to make a little knot, right? Then, we've got more string, it's red, and scissors, and we're going to hang them up. And um, anyway, I'll give you details about that in a little bit, All right, when we're doing our prayers. And <clears throat> the reason I tell you about it now is so you can think about it, this is this tiny little exercise in faith and in believing in that spirit and in starting to make use of it. Because the body, the church, was created by God. And our mission is to communicate that love and that good news of God. And our goal is to have that fellowship here together with each other and with our community. The world changed after Pentecost. And it's going to continue to change as long as we continue to breathe in and breathe out that spirit and that fire of God. Today, if you're tired, if you're kind of lonely, if you're frustrated, if you don't know where to get more faith, this is the day whereby celebrating Pentecost and Claiming Pentecost and that Holy Spirit power and gifts, we can make progress to feel better, to make more of a community. And even though you're tired and you're going to go home to sleep somewhere, finally, right? You're probably going to get a little mini charge of energy for a little bit here. And then you'll take a well deserved rest this afternoon. One more illustration before we move on to our hymn. In our epistle reading that um, Elliot read for us, we learned that every 
one of us is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Every single one of us receives that Spirit. That breath was for each of us. Each one of us might have a different version, a different particular gift, individualized, tailored just for us. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment. We all have something slightly different that we're good at, spiritually, socially, mentally. So we need all of us, because we need all of those gifts to do our growing. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we're all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we all were made to drink of the same spirit. So that fire from heaven, that wind, it's filling all of us, and we each have a different task to do with that power. Some are dragon riders. Some are musicians. Some are just teachers. Just teachers, right. Most important job in the world. So, your invitation today is to breathe in that spirit. Breathe in the fire. Breathe it back out again and share it. Amen. Oh.